face to face it's mainly been studio vlogs for the last few weeks but I thought I would do another holiday special so last year we made this glittering crowds and shimmering clouds but this year I thought I would do something a little bit more complex. We're gonna make stamped wrapping paper. I asked you guys in the little community tab if you wanted to see that and most of you said yes. Well, no one said no. I'm sure you wanna see it since you clicked on the video. <laughs> Does it look weird that your hands are like perfectly square going like this? <laughs> Is that just a thing? <laughs> this is the pavement on here, that's why my hands are like that. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video once again. It's a website building platform that I use all the time. I've used it for the past three years, so thank you so much for choosing to sponsor my video. Anyway, let's get started. So what you'll need is this. Bing. So for this, Project. I'm going to be using this roll of craft paper. You can get rolls of paper at Ikea. You can get last time I told them to steal paper That was not a good thing to do. Do not steal paper, but you could use this 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 even this It really just depends on the ink you're using and the size of your gift So you need to make that decision But craft paper is simple and easy and I'm pretty sure you can get it at any like art material store any craft hobby stores Step number one. We need to sketch our designs if you want to draw your design on paper first, you can. I'm just going to go straight into it because I feel like it doesn't really matter if it's hand printed, anything's going to look good. You could do shapes, you could do patterns. I'm going to do many little stamps. I think that'll make the design more interesting. Glittering crowds and shimmering clouds. I'm leaving some space in between the drawings because I'm going to cut them out. No, I don't want Christmas themed. I want everyone to be included in this fun. Yes. Hopefully I can draw this llama. I've never... Yeah, I need to draw a tiger. This is Tiger. He's my new friend that Rocket got from Ecuador. How cruel, we use him then we just throw him away like trash. So I've done some main objects, not sure how they're gonna turn out. However, I'm also doing some patterns in between. So even if they don't really turn out, it's okay, it's abstract. Am I right, girls and boys? In Australia, the holidays are in summer, so I'm doing some popsicles and nobody can stop me. Remember, Santa? I know Santa. You know him personally? Yeah. Can you ask him why he didn't get me a dog all these years? Okay, so I've done a really weird rough Thing. Don't know if you can see that. Uh oh, it's too bright. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting each of the little images away so that each little drawing is its own stamp. I actually don't know what 4K is. Okay, so let me teach you. <laughs> Whatever that means. Wow, I'm actually car carving so many stamps right now. The next step is to carve your rubber stamps. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get these done in time because Rocket and I need to go to my mom's house to eat spaghetti bolognese and that is priority. Let's choose our favorite stamps to begin with. Trees, obviously, houses, these little patterns, stars, and then I'll carve these for another time and obviously the llama because that's so cute. So grab your tar carving tools. You can usually buy these in a set. The ones that I'm gonna use most, the detailed little V-shaped ones. I'm not really sure what it's called. I did like one module of printmaking in university, but I re retained very little information in my brain. And then I'm gonna be using a really wide U-shaped one so that I can dig out like the big blocks of white that I don't want to be part of the stamp. Glittering crowds and shimmering clouds and canyons of steel
Of one of the hot tips that I need to tell you, well, it's not really a hot tip, it's more just like safety, so it's not really hot at all. But always point the carving tool away from you. When I was in year 10, my art teacher would always say this, and now it's like fully ingrained into my brain. Just make sure it's not in line with any body part. So we've carved most of the stamps out. We've left some because we're running out of light and I need to go eat spaghetti bolognese. The two methods that you can use to print are if you have one of these spongy ink, what are they called? Ink pad. Yeah, a spongy ink pad. These are more common, you can buy them from stores. But if you want to go more, even more luxe, you can use block ink, which is what you use for printmaking. These ones are about $16 a bottle. So, I mean, it depends how much you want to spend, but I think that the result is a lot nicer because these are really opaque, whereas these are more water-based. They're more like thick, like tar, and these ones are more like watery. You know how stamps work. You probably know how to use these ones, so I'm not gonna waste time by showing you how to do that. What you'll need if you're using block ink, you'll need a roller. You'll need something to put the ink on. I would not recommend putting it on your table because it can be quite permanent, but you can use things like baking paper if you kind of tape it down, but I'm gonna use just a piece of glass. That's what I was taught to use in uni, so that's what I'm gonna use now. I actually don't know if these stamps are working yet, so if they're not working, it just means you need to spend a little bit more time on, on them. We don't have time because we need to eat spaghetti. Ooh, that needs to be stirred. This is a palette knife, you can use a spoon. I'm gonna stir the ink, you should always do this because often the heavier parts of the ink settle. These are really old inks. Put a line out. Not too much because if you put too much it'll fill the holes and what you're gonna do is roll it out up and down and back and forth you'll get this sound yeah that's good so when it gets this like wall like texture and it's really really tacky oh, it sounds so good nostalgic let's go with the mr. house roll it over the top just lightly ready pop it down squish and then pull up <laughs> so cute, so cute, cute. I'm not sure how this one's gonna turn out. It could be really, really bad, but we shall see. Cute, I'm happy. I would put the bigger ones and the main ones evenly spaced, and then you can use the smaller stamps to kind of disperse the pattern throughout the wrapping paper. And that's how you can kind of make a more balanced design. We're gonna do a little rocky rock. The reason I like to use rubber stamps more than potato stamps or like ones that are made from less durable material is that these will last for ages. I've got stamps that I made years and years and years ago still and I can still use them and they still function really, really well. Okay. For making is so fun. I'm gonna do more of it this year. I love wrapping paper. I don't know what it is about wrapping paper. I just freaking love designing it. No matter if it's digital, stamp making, just randomly painting. It's just so much fun. I made a mess. I made a mess. Do, 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 do. Yay. Okay, finish. Look, upside down, wrapping paper. That's it, pretty easy, huh? It didn't take that long, it probably took one hour or so, and that sounds like a long time, but the majority of that was just making the stamps, and once you've made the stamps, they'll last for years. You can use them every single year, and it's really, really quick and fun. You can do it with friends, you can do it with kids. It's really, really nice, and it's just a really nice touch to have something handmade wrapped around a present for some, someone that you love. Please send me photos, I would love to see. If you think this is a little bit too hard, I did a a wrapping paper tutorial last year, which was really, really, really basic. It was basically just smudging lines onto paper. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do this too, but if you're less confident, first of all, believe in yourself. And second of all, you can check out that tutorial. I just wanna say thank you to Squarespace again for sponsoring a video. I really, 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 really love Squarespace, which is why we're working together. If you don't know what Squarespace is, Squarespace is a website building platform. So a place that you can build your own website my blog is there, my store is there, my portfolio is there. Everything that I have online is on Squarespace. So if you want to check Squarespace out, you can do so at 
Wait, what is the link? <laughs> Squarespace.com slash very little peach. You'll get a free two week trial. And if you choose to continue using Squarespace, you get 10% off your purchase. So even if you don't know what Squarespace is or you don't know if you like it, I would definitely recommend trying it because having an online space, your own online space, not just on social media is super, super important, especially as a creative. So enjoy. I hope you like this tutorial. And happy holidays, everyone. I'm going to wrap these later. I need to go eat spaghetti now, but I'll see you in two hours. Bye. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. You guys are cool. Bye. Autumn in New York. Glittering crowds and shimmering clouds. In canyons of steel There Clouds 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 Autumn in New York It's good to live in Again It's been more than a day. Hello again. I am feeling fresh. The pasta was excellent. Thank you for asking. So what I'm going to do is just wrap some gifts. I haven't gotten all my Christmas shopping done, but I want to upload this video, so I'm going to wrap some stuff. Some of it, some of it is for me. I am wrapping gifts for myself. You got to love yourself. You got to treat yourself. I wonder if any of you are actually going to do the tutorial. I hope so. It's a fun one. Face down. I love wrapping paper. This is so cute. I'm going to make more. This is not going to be enough. Off camera, I made some gradient yellow and orange wrapping paper. I really like experimenting with color. I feel like it just completely elevates anything you do. Also, I can't help myself when it comes to color. It's like completely an addiction or a compulsion. I remember a time when I thought that my work wasn't edgy enough. And my solution in my head was like, oh, everyone that's cool is doing no color. So I'm going to try not to do as much color, but it didn't work out, so, oh well. I like color, what can I say? Oh my gosh, yeah, so cute. I feel like it's not a great tutorial and I'm really sorry about that, especially since you're at the end of it. I hope that you learned something new, but if you didn't, I hope you were at least entertained. I just launched, um, those, those Boundless Plains to Share prints were basically um, all of the profits go to the ASRC to help asylum seekers and refugees. So we raised 1,700 and something dollars, which is insane. That is all you guys. Thank you to anyone who brought a print, seriously. It's like, I merely just donated my time and you guys did the rest. My little sister, I forgot to give her a copy of Zoom. So she's gonna be getting that as part of her present. I don't think I've ever said this on camera, but I find the support on YouTube really, 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 really nice. Like unlike any other social platform that I've used recently. I used to get this feeling on Tumblr where everyone was a peer and it was really, really mutually supportive and stuff. And just when when things shifted to Instagram, it was kind of less so, I guess, because the comments were quicker. They were more similar. It was just like nice, so nice. You know what I mean? Which is great, but sometimes it gets it gets lost because you don't know how much of it's true and how much of it's just like a autom automatic comment. But on YouTube, it's like, you guys send really long and detailed comments and I appreciate every single one. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but my experience this year on YouTube has been insane. I went from like having like 5,000 subs to whatever I have now. And I don't know if any of my social channels have ever grown this fast, but I just want to thank you guys for being a huge part of that. And even though my content is inconsistent, I don't post very much. I take forever to edit. I'm not like reliable. I want to thank you for sticking by me because 
really nice that you're here. Especially filming studio vlogs, it really helped motivate me. Aside from my own one of documenting my work, it's really nice to know that there's a community that's really interested in what you're doing and that's there for you if you freak out or have like mini meltdowns. Yeah, just thanks.